Hi, my name is Brandon and I'm an alcoholic and addict. Yesterday I talked some about some of the misconceptions regarding AA meetings, how they work, what to expect when you go to one. Today I want to talk about some of the misconceptions about AA itself, as well as the 12 steps, what they are, what they're all about, and why we as addicts go through the 12 steps. And so starting us out by reading a little bit from Living Sober, they say hundreds of us have only had a vague idea of what AA was before we actually came to this fellowship. Now we sometimes think there's more information than truth about AA floating around. So if you have not looked into AA firsthand, we can imagine some of the distorted false impressions you may have picked up since we had so many of them ourselves. So I had a lot of distorted and false perceptions about AA before I got into the program. Didn't really understand anything about the 12 steps either. So first I want to break down the 12 steps to their most fundamental level. What they are, what they mean, why we're doing them. I'm not going to go through the 12 steps themselves. You can look that up. Um, there's lots of information out there about each individual step and uh, lots of written information there, um, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that here. But what I do want to talk about is what the twelve steps as a program really is for. And so, breaking this down into three points. The first point is that the foundation of Alcoholics Anonymous and the twelve step program in general is that helping other alcoholics and addicts is the most successful method for seeking long-term sobriety and recovery for ourselves. So the foundation and since its inception, the idea of helping other alcoholics and addicts recover from alcoholism and addiction is the single most important thing in keeping ourselves sober and in long-term recovery. So the second point is, in order to prepare us to do that, the 12 steps offer a way to rebuild a spiritual foundation for a principled way of living. And that's something that most of us, if not all of us, either lost during our addiction or never learned to begin with. So in order to help other people, we often need to build a or rebuild a spiritual principled way of living and the 12 steps helps us do that. The third point is the only way to go through the 12 steps is to have someone who's already completed them take you through them and help guide you through them. Once that's happened, that's when you're ready to do the same for others. So in summary, the 12 steps are about helping other people, getting prepared to help other people by rebuilding and reframing our own spiritual, our own spirituality and the principles by which we live, and then working with someone to actually do that. So when we talk about AA and the 12 steps, there's lots of myths around the organization and the way that the 12 steps work. So the first biggest myth that I'm aware of that kept me from going to AA for the longest time was that it's a Christian organization or that if it isn't, it's all about God. And the uh, there are certainly a lot of people in AA who believe in a Christian God and they're, and that's the higher power that they choose. And that is one of the most important fundamental parts of AA is that you have to believe in a power greater than yourself. You have to believe there's something in this universe that's greater than yourself. So a lot of people who come into AA either have experience with, for example, the Christian God, and they choose that as their power greater than themselves. And that's great because then they have an opportunity 
to go to places like church where they can have further experience with fellowship that's spiritually uplifting and that that also tends to help in long-term recovery so those kind of higher powers are great for some people for others like myself i i had a i came in to the program as an atheist at least that's what i thought i was it turns out i wasn't really an atheist i believed in some things all along and maybe i was just labeling them incorrectly um, and so I came into the program not really uh, warm to the idea of a higher power in terms of a god like the one that I had learned about growing up in the church. But a higher power can be something much different. For example, one of the many of the people that I talked to say that their higher power is the AA Fellowship. The group of group of drunks is what a lot of people will say, um, and the AA fellowship represents a higher power that helps them stay sober, and they could not do that themselves. They could not stay sober without their higher power, which is the group, the fellowship. So there's lots more about higher power in the AA literature. I'm not going to get super into that now, just to, to reassure people that the the uh, idea that it is a God organization, that it is a Christian organization, that's that's not true. There may be some people in the organization who do rely on a Christian God who are uh, very vocal about their belief in God. And that's fine. That's what works for them. But that's not the way that everybody within the organization believes or what they incorporate into their own program. Second myth that I'll throw out there is that people in AA are depressing. That's absolutely not true. In fact, I have never found a group of less depressing people than I found in 12-step programs. Um, most of these meetings that I attend are a lot of fun. People are happy, they're smiling, they're hugging, they're being just overall grateful to be alive. And that's the other thing that you get filled with when you're around these folks is a sense of gratitude that, hey man, we could be dead in the gutter somewhere. And we're here and happy and actually contributing to society this is good stuff so that's that's something that i have not found to be true people in aa and other programs by and large are happy people and getting together with them is usually a pretty fun experience uh the third myth that i've heard is that aa is a cult and that's not true at all um AA is, uh, they don't even get your, inf it's, it's all about anonymity, so they don't even get your information, you don't have to, you can give them a fake name if you want to, um, you know, there aren't any, while there are some places that are like central clubhouses and things like that, they don't have like a house you go live at and do certain things a certain way, um, and if you drop out of the program, you may have people calling you to see how you're doing, where, where you're at, but they're doing that because they're concerned about you, uh, not because they're trying to rope you back into the program because they want your money or your house or your car. And that goes to the fourth myth that I, I want to dispel, which is that it's a scam. It, it's not a scam. Um, you know, there's nothing that they... they the people in AA who are doing this are, are, are participating because it helps them stay sober, you know, and they hope to help other people who want to be so, sober stay sober. But if you go to an AA meeting, you know, they'll pass around a basket for the seventh tradition of uh, being self-sustaining. And you'll see people put a quarter in the basket because that's what they can afford to do. You'll see some people pass it right by because either they don't feel like contributing or they don't, uh, they're unable to, and that's okay too. You know, 
people contribute voluntarily. You'll, you'll never at an AA meeting be pressured to contribute money. And if you are, that is either not a legitimate AA meeting or maybe not one you should go back to. Um, the fifth myth I'll dispel is that there's a catch. There's, there's no catch um, to AA. It, it's pretty transparent. What's expected in the steps, um, the literature is all out there. You can read it on your own. You know, I, I've never been surprised by anything I've heard at a meeting. So, um, and then the last thing I'll, I'll mention is that uh, the myth of if it really worked, the success rate would be higher. Um, and my take on this is that the success rate in AA is higher um, than if people are just left to their own devices. Me personally, you know, I, I wanted to quit. I tried to quit. I, I did. And uh, I could not do that without some kind of transformational spiritual change in my life. And AA is what offered that change to me. You know, there are other organizations and ways to get that change. That's great. But that AA offered that to me, and it does it at a very, very affordable price tag, which is contribute what you can when you can, you know. Um, and otherwise, though, the, the real uh, genuine concern of everybody that I've met in AA is to help others stay sober. And... So I, I have found it to be a wonderful organization. That's not to say that people don't have bad experiences in it. They do. Um, there's all sorts of nightmare stories about people who have had bad experiences in the AA organization. That's no different from any other organization in the world. Um, unfortunately, there are bad people out there and there are bad people in AA who are misguided and take, try to take advantage of other people, just like there are in any other organization in the world. By and large, though, the people I've met genuinely care about staying sober themselves and helping others stay sober. That's what AA was built on. That's what the 12 steps are about. And that's why you go to these meetings and see so many people smiling and happy. Um, because they're there for genuine reasons to help each other out. Hope this helps a little bit. If you have any questions about AA or anything that I said that you don't agree with, feel free to leave a comment on the video. Um, otherwise, hope you have a good day, and I'll be back here tomorrow.